Hey friends, welcome to another video. This is gonna be a weekend reading vlog. It's been quite a while since I filmed a reading vlog. Usually these days, my weekends tend to be really busy and that's when my least amount of reading gets done because my husband and I make social plans or we have stuff going on or errands to run, projects to do. It's like the time that we can really spend with each other so I don't get a lot of alone reading time done. However, for this weekend, he is at a physical therapy course conference work thing, basically all of Saturday and all of Sunday and I get to have a weekend to myself. And so I thought this would be the perfect weekend to film a little reading vlog. Now I thought about doing like a 24 hour readathon, but I value my sleep too much and don't wanna lose any of it. So it's just gonna be more so during the day on Saturday and Sunday, I'm gonna be reading. But I do wanna make it a little bit of a challenge. So my plan is to get like as much books read as possible. And I thought let's make it middle grade March themed, which is this big readathon hosted by several ladies. I'll link them down below. It's a very exciting thing that everyone on booktube here loves. I don't read too much middle grade but I dabble here and there and I enjoy the middle grade that I pick up and so I thought I would show you what my stack here of middle grade books that I hope to pick up in this vlog or at least get majority of them read if possible or at least some portion of them. I honestly have no idea how much reading I'm gonna get done but that's like the only thing on the schedule. So first book up is Picture of Hollis Woods by Patricia Riley Giff. This is a Newbery Honor book that was published in 2002 so it's been around for quite a while. This is about a foster girl and the families that she gets put with. I've heard really great things about this from Chantal Reads All Day as well as from Books and Jams. I wanna give it a try and it's very short and I actually already started reading. I'm like 30 pages in. I started this last night, so this is first one on the list. For the prompt Asian men character, I want to read Other Words for Home. This is a free verse middle grade about a Syrian refugee family. I have the audiobook downloaded on Libby. I hope to pair them together. I then picked up Sweep, the story of a girl and her monster. Now this one, when I initially saw people reading about it, I was like, I'm not really interested in it. However, I recently read Lightfall, which is this adorable children's fantasy middle grade graphic novel about a girl and literally like a monster or there's like a creature and they're friends. I'm like this is giving me that vibe except this is set in Victorian England I believe and I'm going to England in September so I'm obsessed with like any books right now that are set in the UK. I want to read them all. I believe this is a magical fantasy which I, I haven't really read very much at all of but I'm willing to try and everyone seems to love this one. For the contemporary prompt I have Out of My Mind by Sharon Draper. This is another really beloved one about a girl with cerebral palsy. Everyone thinks that she's dumb and mute and like doesn't have a care in the world, doesn't understand what's going on, but she's actually a genius. She just can't physically express that until I believe a teacher recognizes her genius. And so this is really like the inner workings and the inner turmoil of this young girl. Heard great things. This next one is When the Stars Are Scattered by Victoria Jameson and Omar Mohammed. This is a graphic novel. I heard Krista from Books and Jams mention this in a recent book haul. It's about two boys in a refugee camp in Kenya. Sounds really incredible and I feel like I can definitely squeeze this one in because it's a graphic novel. It won't take me too long. The two classics that I will definitely read in March, I just don't know if I'll be able to complete them in this video, is The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett. This beautiful illustrated version. Again, I read the graphic novel of this earlier in 2021 and loved it. Really want to read the whole book, March, springtime, all the things. And finally, Peter Pan by J.M. Barry. I've never read the original Peter Pan story. I've watched the Disney adaptation. I've watched the other like live action one and I would love to read this guy. So those are all my possibilities. That's quite a bit. This is a long intro, I know. We'll see where this weekend takes us. I plan to literally do nothing but read and puzzle. We do have a social outing this evening and I have some meal prepping to do tomorrow. It is Saturday, I didn't mention that. It's Saturday at 9.30 a.m. So I'm gonna make myself some tea and get cracking on a book. Hey everyone, I'd like you guys to meet Zoe on camera. This is our newest addition to the Thompson fam. So in a couple vlogs, earlier vlogs and stuff, I always introduce my other cat, Lexi, who's outside somewhere right now. She's a bit of a jerk. She's also a gray fluffy kitty. But this one, my husband and I found literally just wandering around outside as a little feral kitten. She was limping around. She has no home. She definitely had like zero interaction with humans before. And so what, what day is it? Today is March 5th and we got her at some point in January. It's 
been such a process to get her to trust us. She still totally doesn't. She's absolutely terrified about it, but she's a sweet little girl. We named her Zoe. She's had some health stuff going on because, you know, being like a feral kitten outside, she was eating gross things and all that. I never thought that I'd be someone who not only had one cat, but now has two. But she's a cutie. She's a little gray kitty. She's always scared. She gets used to me. And then I feel like I swear she has short term memory because she completely forgets that we built any trust. It is now 1.30 on Saturday and I just finished the first book of the weekend, Pictures of Hollis Woods. And I really enjoyed this one, gave it four stars. This was very sweet and moving and kind of like poetic story about a young girl in the foster care system and her finding family and her grappling with what it means to be loved and wanted. And I just thought it was very well done. One done. I only have a couple hours left, but I think that in the couple hours I can definitely finish when stars are scattered. So this is gonna be my next book that I'm gonna start right now. I'm just enjoying a little cozy moment at home. Reading, got the vibes, got the candle. Although it's really nice outside, so I might actually throw on a coat and get an audiobook going and take a walk outside. The only audiobook I have from Libby that is not adult, like I, just, I have a ton of books on Libby right now waiting for me that I wanna read in March, but the one middle grade I have on there is A Place to Hang the Moon. So I think that's gonna be the one I'm gonna start. It's a middle grade World War II novel about some kids during the Blitz and they're sent to the countryside. I heard it's quite similar to The War That Saved My Life, but less heavy. Looking forward to starting that one. Another check in here turned out to be a beautiful sunny day. I got another book done. This was fantastic. And also I didn't realize this was primarily a nonfiction account of Omar Mohammed's experience in the refugee camp. This book just shed a light on what being a refugee is like. He was originally from Somalia. Him and his brother lost his parents and they had to live in this refugee camp. This book went in every detail of what that experience was like, what school was like, what eating was like, what building a community and found family was like in this refugee camp. And I thought it was just brilliant. I think one of those books that more people should read. And I think that it was also very well done for a younger audience. I think this was a fantastic graphic novel and I would definitely recommend. So two books completed today and it's been a great reading day. I'm going to be going to a family get together, playing games with some friends on Brennan's side of the family. And so I'm about to get ready and head out and on my 30 minute drive, I'm gonna be continuing to listen to A Place to Hang the Moon. It's really cute so far. I only got like 20 minutes into it on my walk, but I'm enjoying it so far. Hey, hey, it's evening now, bedtime. And I just wanted to give a quick check-in that I have made it to about like 45% of the way through A Place to Hang the Moon. And I am really loving it. I really have yet to give a proper middle grade five stars. Even if it's fantastic, I somehow still only give them four. I think except for the Harry Potters, but this one has definitely crept into five star potential territory. It's really like a great book. It's it's middle grade, but it's not lacking depth and it's not lacking humor. And I think the character development is spot on. It's about these three children who are now orphaned. Their parents died when they were young and they were living with their grandmother and their grandmother just passed away. And it just happens to be during wartime and a bunch of children are getting evacuated into the countryside. They're actually left with quite a bit of a fortune, but they don't have anyone to look after them. So on the hunt for or a future family to adopt them. But one little part that I thought was kind of funny and kind of sweet was each of them were only allowed to bring one book with them from home. And it's a nine-year-old, an 11-year-old, and a 12-year-old. The nine-year-old brought a little princess. The 11-year-old brought the Count of Monte Cristo. And I thought, what 11-year-olds are reading the Count of Monte Cristo? In America, at least, the earliest age probably someone would read that book would be high school, which would be like between 15 and 18. I don't know what 11-year-olds are reading it, but I guess this is England during the 1940s. So maybe 11-year-olds 
months we're reading the Hannah Monte Cristo, but still. Yeah, I'm just really loving it. I'm excited for where the story's gonna go and I will definitely be finishing it tomorrow. Happy Sunday. It is currently lunchtime. The morning got away from me just a little bit. It is a bit of an errand day, but I am sprinkling relaxation and reading throughout. I really do wanna work on a puzzle today and continue listening to A Place Staying the Moon, but a physical book that I started reading before bed last night that I'm really loving is Sweep. I mean, no surprise because everyone's loving this one. It's very different, but it's creative and unique and I'm enjoying the storytelling and it's actually very compulsive. I stayed up way too late reading it because I wanted to keep figuring out what was happening with the story and it's just, it's very sweet, very wholesome. I'm enjoying this one. So I'm hoping to finish both Sweep and A Place to Hang the Moon today. I got laundry going. I got some lunch to eat. I got a puzzle to start. I got to do like some cleaning. Need to go to the grocery store at some point. That's usually my kind of Sunday. It's 4 p.m. now. Just checking in that I finished A Place to Hang the Moon and I really loved it. I gave it five stars. I thought it was perfect. It was very comparable to kind of felt like Narnia and The War That Saved My Life. Very sweet, very wholesome. I would even probably read another book if it was set with the same characters and they went on more adventures and did more things together as a family. So third book checked off the list this weekend and I actually am making some progress on this puzzle. I'll show you in a second, but I started listening to the audiobook for other words for home. So I have the physical book here, but I have the audiobook checked out as well. It's only four hours. So listening to this one and enjoying it. But anyways, let me show you the puzzle I'm working on. The magic puzzle company. I highly, highly recommend. I'll link them below, but I know that these are now found in American Targets. I don't know if they're in other stores, but this is what I'm working with. They're really like cool. There's like multiple steps involved and they're really like fun puzzles. This is kind of my hot mess of a situation. Got some tea and I'm using a fancy puzzle board that my husband got me for Christmas. So it's nice because it's like felt and they just stay wherever you put them. So this is the puzzle. It's funny because there's like multiple edge pieces and then there's like fun lines in between and all that kind of stuff. So it's a bit of a challenge, but I'm enjoying it. So that's the current setup I have. We'll continue doing that. I will take a pause though because I have to make some dinner and I have to do some meal prepping, but I'll listen to as much as I can and I'll check in with you later. Hey friends, it's time to wrap up this vlog, but I ended up finishing five books in this reading vlog, all for middle grade March. And let me just go through them really quickly. I completed all the prompts except for one with these five books and a place to hang the moon. I don't have that one physically. But the first book I finished is Pictures of Hollis Woods. And this is a contemporary, so it works for that as well as the orphan prompt. Really enjoy this one. When Stars Are Scattered also works for the orphan prompt. And I guess technically contemporary. This was a great graphic novel that I fully enjoyed. I finished A Place to Hang the Moon, also works for the orphan prompt and five or more words in the title. This one is definitely the favorite out of the five here. I also finished Other Words for Home, a middle grade with an Asian main character and then finally completed sweep which also works for the orphan prompt I didn't really talk about this one because I just finished this today which is Wednesday so not so much the weekend anymore but this one was a historical fantasy set in Victorian London about a young girl who's a chimney sweep based on historical events and there's just beautiful friendship in here found family loss and grief all wrapped up in like a very unique and wonderfully told tale really enjoy this one too so I just had a ton of success with all of these books like all of these were either four or five stars and I don't read a lot of middle grade but I think my sweet spot just as it is in other books is historical and nonfiction tends to be my favorites and I think that's no surprise here either. I am off to a great start. The only prompt I have not completed yet but will by the end of the month is a book that is older than me and for that like I mentioned in the intro I'll either be reading The Secret Garden or Peter Pan or both so we'll be starting that soon. It was a fantastic reading weekend so I'm happy with that and I'm just gonna wrap it up here. I did end up actually getting to over halfway of The Wonder by Emma Donahue. This is a book that, an adult book, so not for middle grade March, but I am currently reading this one because I wanted to read more books with an Irish setting. So I'm working my way through this one. You can watch my March wrap up for my thoughts on it. And then the next physical read that I will be starting is actually this one, A Well-Behaved Woman. This is all about the Vanderbilt family. So this is my next physical read. And then once I'm done with this, I'll either pick up The Secret Garden or Peter Pan. So yeah, thank you so much for sticking around and spending some time with me today. And I hope your March 
treating as going well, whether or not you're participating in middle grade March. But it was a nice little weekend to get quite a few books read off the list. I'll see you guys in another video soon. Bye.